Well, let's talk about the next topic then, because it kind of bleeds into it. Okay. Do you want me to s- pause this? No, you can say what you're about to say, because it's going to bleed into I it. I think the, the younger boys of this generation think that they need to be further along in life than they are, and they think that they ha- need to have more money. They think that they need to be ha- driving a specific type of car. They need to be wearing this and that. They need to be investing in bitcoin and they need to have this type of platform and this and that and you need to be a boss and you need to have a portfolio and this and that. you're 14 hold on that was a shot though what you just said earlier. no but like that's what like the i've seen this regularly on social media like no i'm just saying that like the, the little boys are aspiring to things that like should you shouldn't be as like maybe you can have like a poster of a Ferrari in your room, but actually thinking that you should have a Ferrari at 18 is crazy. No, yeah, I mean, that for sure. I'm just talking about because what we talked about earlier this morning. Yeah. You tried to say the Bitcoin thing. That was a shot. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it goes into what I was wanting to talk about with that because you have these images like what we talked about, Lil RT. And now you have a new guy that just came out, a little 11-year-old, FNG, Lil King. He was just in the club for his 11th birthday, had a little baby in the club with him. Had uh, I believe he's a finesse two times artist. So finesse two times was in the club. Drake was in the club with him. Yep. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself because y'all know be. y'all would not have y'all sons up there in that nope. club just like that. Drake, your son, your son is in Europe gallivanting around the world, learning a bunch of different languages and skills, playing the piano. And I know you wasn't trying to get a verse. Trying to trying to make make this little boy uh, what what you call it? He's he's literally. You're you're exposing your son to culture and um things that will grow his cog- cognitive functioning while supporting the detriment of another little black boy, which is absolutely insane. Like this boy is in the club. You you know folks is drinking, so who they're not being nigga, responsible. Who let this boy in the club? The same folks that was letting Bow Wow in the club when he was little. If you pay the post enough, they're gonna let it, they're gonna say he just a, a performer and an act. Yeah. For the night, they're going to do whatever little things they got to do to bypass the, the rules. But, like, all y'all black men doing this are failing our community. The Like, straight up. I think with... And it goes back to what you said about having this lifestyle that they want to aspire to. Mm-hmm. And then you have these guys that literally do that to these little kids. And they have no concept of clout, of how this is going to be an up and down thing, how you actually got to have talent it's really fucked to up. do this. And they don't understand none of that. And then you have guys who try to live this lifestyle so much that you end up having a little perk. Who, if y'all not familiar, in Atlanta, he just got sentenced to a life sentence because he killed a 12-year-old at the local shopping center. How old is little perk? 16. Like, you have a life sentence. But he did this. this, He got that. He was 16 when he got the sentence. So he was 14 when it happened. And the boy was 12. He was 14 and killed a 12-year-old. Yes. Like there's on no some street reason, beef type shit. Like if a fourteen year old has has beef with a twelve year old, it should go no further than like playground fighting. These boys are at a local popular shopping area, and they get into it and get people shot. Not they were. Why do why why does either of these boys, regardless of which one of them had guns, if both of them had guns or Be, not? Because if why you look do, into why it, do they have guns? Because if you look into it. Some of those boys that was involved are in popular Atlanta rappers, brothers. They're involved, and that's why they having all these little sub beefs and shit going on. They're trying to be like the bigger rappers that they see, uh, talking about spinning, talking about oh they bought that life. And when it comes down to it, they're going to be dumb and crash out. And then y'all niggas, y'all Drakes, y'all little babies, y'all just forget about them. Speaking of little baby, y'all gonna put some on little perk book? No. No, y'all just gonna forget about him. He's just gonna spend the rest of his life in prison, and then that's it. So I wanted to bring this up. When I saw this topic, I thought it was really interesting. Um, when it comes to little baby, and s- like specifically, you remember when um that video came out of his son, mm-hmm. with and his, then with his, with his baby mama, yeah, with Jada, and when then every the juice, everyone was like, "Oh, he's mm, he's you know, giving." I, you know, I saw that. I I had that so wrong. I didn't get what people were talking about. He just looked like a little boy, didn't he? I watched it and just thought people were saying because he, uh, they were trying. I thought the whole conversation was about her exploiting him, doing the little prank. 
Because he drank something that wasn't a juice and made a little face or something, right? No, they were saying that the boy was a little too sassy. Yes, yes I, I didn't realize that was the, the, the conversation. I thought the conversation was about her exploiting his son. Nobody cares about a, when parents exploit their children. They never do. And that was another part I wanted to talk about <laughs> this before you get on your point, was about how we so often, little boys, we just treat them with so haphazard. Yes. Like, it's disgusting. We we don't protect little black boys the way th- I don't even want to say we don't protect little black boys the same way we protect little black girls. We protect black boys in a different way than we protect black girls. The reason girls. why I say that is because if those same men had a female rapper that was 11 year old in the club that would be insane we would all call them disgusting monsters they would be like like what happened to this little girl this night around all of these men but nobody says that about this little boy no what could have happened to them what, what could have happened but literally what could have happened to him what could have been introduced to him what could have been going on in that club people get shot in the club like that's really fucked up and it's like nobody cares. Nobody looks at it like that. Nobody wants to have any empathy. And then they become the 30-year-old nigga jumping over the fucking uh, bailiff to get to the judge. And then y'all say, oh, I'm glad these niggas in jail because they crash out goofies. When y'all didn't give a fuck about them the entire time their they whole, were growing up. During their development, when their development was getting you fucked up. You encouraged it. When it was you, you thought it was funny. You thought it was cute. You put them in all the little Gucci. You dressed them like the drug dealers and all that shit when they was little. Then when they grow up, they want to keep uh, uh, imitating that. And then you you sit here and and fail them in that manner because you want to encourage bad behaviors. I'd rather you not be around and encourage bad behavior. I just want to point out the difference between the reception of Lil Baby and Jada's son when they thought that he might have been a little too sassy and all of, like, I saw more uproar and people up in arms about, like, she's raising him to be too feminine. Mm -hmm. And he might eventually be gay. And people were so concerned about that because that would be so detrimental to his his life. And then Lil Baby had uh, an 11-year-old in the club with him around what we can probably assume Alcohol, definitely. Drugs, definitely. Um, Like, sexually explicit behavior, definitely. That just generally happens in the club. Even if the, the it's not happening with the people around him, he can probably just look around and see it happening. So the fact that, like, y'all were not equally as mad with his childhood being tainted as... Y'all were upset with, with, with uh, loyal, potentially like, what being feminized in some way, shape, or form. Which I don't, which I don't agree with at all. But like, y'all are really genuinely concerned with the wrong things because. So what if with the little boy grows up gay? That's not gonna. That's not gonna. Well, it, it happens when fuck him up. It happens when the people who are. The counterculture are just the counterculture for the sake of being the counterculture. Like, we have folks, like we said, there's the Cat Williams who criticize uh, the feminization of, of black men as a uh, an attack on their manhood. Mm-hmm. But then you also have the other people who will then use those same ideals and rhetoric and Keep push that. it. I, I have a point about, I, I just want to bring up the feminization of the black man point after this. Continue. No, but I said they use that point to try to push this narrative that then becomes anti, you know, gay people, anti LBGT to try to under the guise of, oh, they're just trying to control our thought patterns and try like, do you idiots hear yourself say when I don't agree with your lifestyle is telling somebody you don't agree with who they are as a person. That is the same thing. It's the same shit. And it's like we we've gotten so pushed out because it's semantics because people's monies have been affected. And instead of, trying to learn how to be better and trying to actually have a community where we f- are forgiving and teaching. We have a community that shames and punishes, and that only makes an individual want to then double down because you have to. you got to find those people with you who are going to double down with you, and then you create your hive and that you grow. So then when you call out somebody on their behavior or the fact that they use their craft or their tool in one particular manner, you have s- so many warriors going to bat for them. So when you because this is a topic that I just randomly I just wanted to ask you about because it's something that I just randomly thought about 
in the past couple days with everything that's been going on with the whole dress conversations and, and things of that nature. We did talk about it last week. So, um, with there's a theory that there is an agenda to feminize black men, right? So with the dresses and with more imagery of homosexual black men in the media, uh, people have been thinking that there's this whole agenda to feminize the black man. D- on the same coin, literally same token, and on the other end, we can say that the black man has been demonized. The black man has been made to seem more aggressive, more dangerous. Um, And like you've been made to fear the black man. So what do you think? I don't know what my question is. What do you think is the um, imagery that outweighs the other? Like what do you see more? What do you think the um the point is behind the imagery and and like what do you think is happening? Because do you think black men are being more feminized or do you think black men are being demonized? I, because I see both. I think that there is there I mean it is both at the end of the day. There is gonna be both. And I, what's the agenda? If we analyze all of this together, like what do you think is happening? Because I can't I can't like gather the conspiracy behind both the things being that they're both such opposite like imageries like what do they want us to think i mean at the end of the day what you're kind of doing you're convoluting two kind of different factions yeah uh but it is used in in an overall marketing um my main kind of takeaway just kind of from what you presented what what two different factions do you think i'm convoluting like the, the the people who are homophobic and then the people who take certain racial ideologies and certain racial principles that have happened over the decades mm-hmm. and apply it to modern day. So there is certain behaviors that can be viewed through that, but they aren't always like, like they think that them putting you in a dress or make you do feminine things is what is emasculating you. But it's, yo, when you, when I tell you to talk about a company or something or talk about me in a certain way, you're going to do it. That's control. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, in a little bit with Stephen A. Smith, but that's control. When a narrative can be start or you will defend something, not because it's the truth or a fact, but because the person who is saying it is doing it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where those two kind of worlds convolute, where it's like, yeah, there is some historical fact to this, but a lot of it's just coming from the fact that a lot of black men have been radicalized by the right and a lot of right information uh, and talking points. Mm-hmm. And now that's where the homophobia has kind of really seeped in, especially when you, you bleed into the religion like we just talked about, um, and then you believe in all these other paranoia ideas. So you think the the homophobia, the feminization of the the black man argument, is rooted more in whiteness than? It's rooted in homophobia, but it's been perverted. Yes. Through our history of racism, to then kind of turn into a different way, where it's like. Now you're applying this to men who actually just feel like this rather than saying I'm forcing two strong men who don't identify this and are against their idea. Like we try to act like being gay is against our religion, like not just religion in a sense, like against our nature. Yeah. Like we try to like act black like black men are not supposed to be gay. Like this is something that was imposed upon them yeah, by like the was, white man. It was pushed on like us. they were never like they would never be gay if it wasn't for the white man. Yeah. Like there isn't stuff in Egypt that shows. People were men loved each other in Egypt. Like there's literally before, art yeah. That Pre-colonialism, didn't. there was mad homosexuality and gay. Like, niggas been gay. I mean, niggas been gay. You go through the Roman <laughs> Empire, you go through <laughs> Europe and all that stuff. You can go down through Africa. Like there's plenty of times of doctrine where men have had so much experience and so much time and so much stuff on their hands that they experimented with everything. Yeah, and that's just like it wasn't looked at like they were less than because they could just have somebody off you like easy (laughs) like there wasn't no discussion about it but no like in in regards to that it's it's a lot of paranoia it's a lot of different because it's kind of like where you take truth and mix a little bit of your lie with it where you take yeah there was buck breaking back in slavery but that's not necessarily everything that's happening because there's also a history of men in dress being funny so again like I don't want to get too much too because we did talk about it in our last episode yeah uh but no it's 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 definitely 
more so pushed from a homo, homo, homophobia agenda. That's what people think they're standing on. 